Why, hello again. This is the KFIT Show. My name is Kaylin Angloss. And before we get started, I just want to let you know real quickly that today's episode is brought to you by Kenzen Sports Karate. Kenzen Sports Karate in Victoria, British Columbia offers traditional as well as sport karate classes and training. And they have a beautiful facility here in Victoria, BC. So if you're looking for sport or traditional martial arts, check out KenzenSportsKarate.ca. Today, I am super excited to bring you a talk that I had with Craig Devlin. Craig Devlin, I have known for years. He was one of my coaches when I was coming up as an athlete, and he has gone on to do great things in the world of combat sports and martial arts. Uh, he specifically works with Karate Canada, and he's one of the coaches on there, as well as he's on the High Performance Committee, which basically looks at all of the high performance in the world of karate, and his role right now what he's doing is he's kind of putting together what he calls a gold medal profile well not what he calls but it is what it's called is, is making a gold medal profile so in the episode you're going to hear him refer to that as the GMP so that's the gold medal profile and basically all that is is looking at what does it take for an athlete to win gold in karate and this is something that is used not only in all the combat sports but all the sports worldwide that you can think of they all have a gold medal or or a championship profile of what it looks like to win so that's what craig's doing with karate canada he is at uh at, well, we'll talk about it in the show but he's doing his master's degree in uh, high performance coaching so he's really in the high performance world so i really wanted to sit down and talk to craig about kind of what he's doing right now and kind of how you put together these these indicators that will be uh, inducive to success for an athlete in whatever sport you're looking at. So I think this is super helpful for coaches uh, or any trainers, anybody who works with athletes. I think you're really going to enjoy this episode. And even if you, you don't work with athletes specifically, if you work with a general population, you'll see that it gives an emphasis on kind of looking at what the preferred way to do things are, what the actual optimal way to do a certain and training way is and then how you can kind of tailor your trainings to try and get there so that's what this is all about is trying to build the best athlete and the best uh, performing individual that we can in whatever we're looking at so again i'm super excited to bring you this episode with craig devlin thanks and i hope you enjoy hello my name is kaylin angloss and I am a certified strength and conditioning specialist. Sounds pretty good, huh? And this is the Kate Fit Show. Five, four, three, two, one. Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to the KFIT show. Thanks for tuning in again. This is episode four. I am sitting here across the table with Mr. Craig Devlin. Craig Devlin, a high-performance specialist, national team coach, and even on his off free time, a fire chief here for the Saanich uh, Fire Department. Craig, I understand you're running on uh, not too much sleep, so I appreciate you coming in and uh, kind of helping us out. How's it going? Hey, no problem. Yeah, it's all good. And yeah. f uh, fire captain. Fire captain. Yeah, oh, no, pardon fire me. Chief. Pardon yeah. me. Uh, a little confusion there, but that's all right. It's a fire captain on your off time, so here we are. Craig, for the longest time, we've we've known each other for a long time. Back when I was a competing athlete, and now uh, going into the coaching realm, we've known a lot each other a long time. For the longest time, you've always been in the karate world, the go-to person, at least on the West Coast, for high performance, uh, especially in competition for karate. And the one thing that always fascinated me was that you were always up to date on all the technological advances and every little thing uh, that went through that. So you were always a good resource to go to. And uh, I'm, I'm glad you can come on the show and uh, talk to us about what you're doing now. Okay, my pleasure. Thanks for the compliment. Yeah, no. I, I always feel like I'm a little bit behind because there's so much to know. But, uh, uh, yeah. uh, I believe it. Like <laughs> I, I feel that too. Like just so much coming at you, and especially now it's moving so fast. It's it is hard to keep up, but I think you're doing a good job. Um, right now, well, you've done first of all, you've done your coaching certification at the National Coaching Institute, right? You've got your coaching. Certificate. Yep. So in 2007 and eight, I went through the the level the old level four certificate yep and then right now i'm working through the uh master's of kinesiology and high performance coaching and technical leadership at ubc yes, and that's right. uh just just nearly done my first uh year but one i got two more assignments 
Right. Okay. So right now you are a national team coach for Team Canada Karate yes. and you go all across the world. You help those guys there. But right now, I think what's really cool is you're doing a lot of work on what makes a athlete uh, perform the best and what makes them successful versus unsuccessful. So just tell us a little bit about what you're doing now at that elite level. Um, well, I'm, I'm really lucky because I get to do the education, the academic end of it, and then work uh, fairly immediately in in the performance world at Karate Canada. So yeah. I'm part of the high performance committee as well as being uh, a coach. Um, so what the, the the main project that we're working right now, and this is one of the elements of my studies as well as is the the the, the podium pathway, mm -hmm. and this is kind of the new big thing within within sport in Canada. And so the podium pathway is used to really. Uh, define what it takes uh, for athletes to excel and uh, it's it's generic so it can be any sport combative team sports uh, artistics or right. centimeter grams and uh, seconds sort of sport sure sure so distance or time based yep exactly yeah yeah so the podium pathway is really made up of two elements one is the gold medal profile yes and the other is the winning style of play or podium results tracking. Okay. So those are two distinct domains within the podium pathway. Okay. Now is this this whole system something that's come out from on the podium, or is this something that's just kind of coming through in the research? Where did you kind of find this pathway? Yeah. So so in Canada, on the podium is really driving this. The right. advisors there, um, because what what the critical question is always in sport is what is your conversion? Mm. So. Just because you have um, uh, an athlete that can medal at a certain event, they want to know what are the what are the possibilities of the conversion rates to the Olympic Games. Of Everything course. kind of focuses on the Olympic of Games. Of course, yeah, yeah. Um, so how do you do that? You you can't just go with gut feel or intuition. Um, you need to find performance measures within um, within that uh, system. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. So what have you done? Like what steps have you taken so far in terms? Of, I know you said you had a couple things left to do, but what have you done so far in, in this whole project? Uh, uh, quite a bit actually. So, no, um, yeah. so basically what I started with was the, the identifying the winning style of play, or we're calling it the winning style of combat because it's a combative sport. Sure, yeah. We're still, we're still hammering down the name. Um, and I've also done some work on the podium results tracking. So that was, that's the prerequisite to going into the, the GMP. So the, um, so with the winning style of play, uh, in a team sport, for example, let's just use soccer, that would be defining what are the actions the, the tactical actions of the best teams in the world. Okay. How do they off, like how do they play offensively and how do they play defensively and how do they work their transitions? Sure. So when we're looking at kind of that model of the technical, tactical, emotional and all that. So this is looking more at the tactical aspect of it. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Just how do they win? Not okay. not not the individual elements. And I guess at the highest level what we could say is the winning style of play is what the team does. And then the gold medal profile is what the individual does. Uh, okay, okay, sure. And that, that model, it kind of breaks down when you talk about an individual sport like a combative because the winning style of play um, is uh, kind of what the, what the athlete does on the mats to win. Like how sure. do they score their points and how do they defend? Yes, okay, yeah. So, so it's, it's more focused on the tactical. Sure. Now, when you're looking at podium results tracking, that would be more for the the 100 meter sprint, the mm. swimming freestyle, that kind of thing. So you can look and say, at 14 years old, this athlete had this time. At 16, this time. And then this athlete eventually got onto the podium at the Olympics. Sure. So just like an athlete profile almost of, you got of their career, basically. Yeah. yeah. So we're just, we're just, we're looking specifically at, at results. Okay. There. No process orient okay. or orientation there. So. In the combatives, which is what I've been doing, we have both. So we can actually say the winning style of play or combat is this element tactically, for example, or that element defensively. So let's say we know roughly 80% of the points right now in, in the karate are scored to the head. Sure. And, and about 70% are the front hand punch, the kizamizuki. So, you know, and that's just specific to karate. Um, for boxing, it would be similar or, or uh, you know, uh, I could go on and on for example, sure, yeah, you know, yeah. rugby has this style of play, that style of play yeah. with the, with the combatives they're all, because it is individual, the podium results track. We also want to see what, what did the world champion, um, plus 84 medalist do 
one year out, two years out, all the way to about eight years out is what we're looking at. Okay. So what was their what was their trajectory to get onto the podium? Okay. Okay. So if we're looking at the world champion, you're going eight years prior to where they got that, maybe for the first time, and what their projection was. Yeah, eight years is um, before before the eight. So so basically five to eight years is your next generation athletes. Okay. Uh, zero to, to um, four years are your target athletes. Okay, yeah, And yeah. then um, if you go more than eight years, then you're looking at your prospects. So they're, so they're the, you know, the 14 years old kind of athletes. Sure. And, and the way we determine that, sorry, just to, so the way we determine that is we know that, um, if we know that a world medalist will be 23, 24 years old when they podium for the first time, then you just work backwards from there. Right. So, and I'm assuming that you're using eight years because you're running in quadrennials. So you're running in two, yes, four years. Yes, exactly. Yeah, cycles. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Uh, yeah. So continue on with what you're talking about there with the uh, performance rate tracking. Okay. Yeah. So with, with the, the, um, Podium results tracking, then um, for individual sports, and again, the combatives are a little bit different because there is tactical elements um, as well as podium results. Sure. Um, for the 100-meter sprint, for example, not too much in the way of tactics. However, we want to know what the times were at, again, 14, 16, 18 years old right, all the way right. up. Yeah. So that's a critical element of the podium pathway that informs then the, the or it leads into the gold medal profile. Okay. And the, and the gold medal profile, again, was just the individual athlete looking at them specifically. Yep, you got it. So, so the four primary domains in the, go, in the gold medal profile are the, the physical, the psychological, the technical, and the tactical. Okay. And again, depending on your sport, there's going to be different weighting for each one of those uh, elements. Um, as this idea matures, um, there, there's elements of uh, high performance lifestyle, for example. So recovery practices, including sleep and nutrition, um, that sort of thing can be, it can be measured sure. and it can be added. So yeah. everything in the GMP, it's gotta be measurable. Absolutely. And that's huge for anybody who's evidence-based for sure. Let's just break that down a little bit. You said physical, technical, tactical, and psychological. Now I yep. know the, I mean, the, the technical and the tactical we can, we can look at that. We can talk to, to an expert in the field and kind of see what the differences are there between a successful athlete and a non-successful athlete. The one I have always gotten a little bit stuck on is the psychological aspect. So mm. I'm wondering what your approach is to that realm of, of that. Yeah. And, and even, you know, in, in all the discussions we're having in, in our program, that is, that's the, definitely the softest one. Sure. Yeah. So what it, and I was just at a workshop not long ago, and that was the, one of the major questions yeah, is how do you do this? So there are, there are some very good psychometric tools. So there's one that will measure mental toughness. And uh, I guess there is some debate on exactly how measurable it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. Or sorry, how accurate it is. Yeah. However, I think the general thinking is if you at least get some baseline with a specific athlete, um, or a specific group group of athletes, what you're looking for is their progress over time. Mm. Ideally, you want to be able to compare them to the best in the world, but you know not every elite athlete is going to share their their personal information, totally. or, or or the nations aren't yeah, going yeah. to either. Um, but it, it at least provides something with respect to resilience and motivation and work ethic. Absolutely, um, uh, that that those areas. Yeah, and I think especially in the combat sports, I mean, we've talked about it before. The psychological aspect is so so important. It probably might even be the most important aspect, especially in competition. So having some way to to look at that. And a specific athlete to measure it and to see, I mean, if you can look at a gold medal profile of a, of a gold medal athlete and see what their psychological makeup is, I think, I think that's great. Um, again, for me, it's just the, the repeatability, I guess, of those, of those measures is kind of tough, but I think going forward, it's going to be something that's going to kind of blow up a little bit. Yeah. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Even, um, you know, even the elements of, of technique, um, there's bandwidths sure there, yeah. you know, there, there can be sprinters who, when you break them down on slow motion, they, they're not that technically refined, sure. but they just have other elements that make up for those gaps. And there's no, uh, there, and, and I should also say that the gold medal profile is for the, the non-existent elite athlete who's perfect in every element. Right. We, we know that you can be super strong in a technical element or if, in the combatives anyways, you might only need one or two very strong technical um, uh, tech maneuvers um, and be pretty good at everything else. And you can go on to the, you can win spots on the podium. Sure. You yeah. don't have to be good at everything. You sure. just have to find your, your niche. 
Okay, so let's just continue on there. The other part of that little quad group there, and and, and my favorite part of that is obviously the physical aspect mm-hmm. of of that whole thing. So for this, uh, for that particular part, I'm assuming you're looking at the fitness testing stuff that we've done, and just kind of looking at the phys- physiological profiles of those gold medal athletes. Yep, exactly. And uh, really, the the term that's that's starting to ring true for me is that what are the discriminating factors? Mm, yeah, yeah. So what are the what are the elements that are are really permission to play so what what do all the top players have but then more importantly what are the handful of discriminating factors that the winners or the elites have that the others don't yes for sure and that was something i was going to ask you too because i know you've been to a lot of international competitions you've been to the world championships and something that i was going to ask you a little bit later but maybe they'll touch on it now is what you find is the main difference between those elite elite athletes at the world level and and maybe the uh less elite athletes maybe at the national level because we've talked about it you know at the national level to win gold medal is great Great, but it's a whole other jump to get to the international Pan American and world level. It's just a whole other ball game. So having b- somebody who's been there at all those levels, what do you think is the main uh, discriminating factors to performing at the world level? Hmm. Yeah, in my current thinking right now, I, I don't see anyone. I okay, see sure. I see combatants for, who have who have uh, a number of different elements. Um, so whether they're just particularly fast like have immediate reactions and as soon as anyone gets within scoring distance they're able to use their one or two techniques sure um, yeah, yeah. others have uh basically the ability to just read the what the other person wants to do and have enough countermeasures to find the ways to score points right. inside of that um, some are really physical, some are really technical, some are really tactical. So there isn't one discriminating factor that I've found. I'm sure there isn't one um, anyways, but yeah. 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 And it's also hard, I think, to just watch from the outside because you're only mm. seeing how that one athlete responds to the other athlete that's, that's right. in front of them. Yeah, yeah. So, th- and as I've done a bunch of um, study into the winning style of, of combat here, there's, there's trends, but there's one athlete may look completely different like a champion may look uh, completely different in the first rounds than in the last round sure. because they're Very fighting common. lower, lower uh, level opponents. Yeah, yeah. So, and that, that's why in the combatives um, and particularly in karate, there's, there's, uh, there's actually a lot of volatility onto the podium because of the way of the, uh, the eliminations is structure is set up. Right. So um, we see changeovers from year to year or world championships to world championships. Sure, sure. Upwards of 85% of the athletes on the podium are different from year to year. Wow, well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's a lot of volatility. Right, okay. Let's go back to the physical aspect of that, which we were just touching on yep. as well. Um, so you, I know we've done some fitness testing, which, yep. which we're both quite familiar with. You just were at the Senior National Training camp just about a month ago uh doing the the fitness testing on that so how does that kind of shape in the gold medal profile and the, the podium review? well it's um it's it's critical we need to know kind of what the the baseline thresholds are sure. um we're in, in my particular system we don't select athletes onto the team by anything other than performance really at this point right so there's um, no cut scores on those fitness tests correct like yeah. yeah so again if, if we if we look kind of outwards into team sports you can't go individual to individual you have to have some sort of measurement criteria to bring your athletes on so this would be one of those yeah, elements yeah, yeah. specific back to the physical um what we're using it what we're we're doing right now is we're we're building the foundation so that we can start to track and see again what are the permission to play uh, scores and then what are this this the discriminating scores sure. um we we really believe that technique and tactic are are paramount of course um, and In combat that, sports for sure yeah, yeah and that the physical um there are you know those threshold levels as long as you as you break that threshold you're you're going to be in the in the ballpark yeah yeah um, but I will say a recent study out of Brazil has shown that their, the, the discriminating factors between their winners and their losers with lower body power or strength, yeah. the, their strength was permission to play. All mm. were equal. Their vertical jump, counter movement vertical jump, that was permission to play all were equal okay but the vertical the the jump squat with 30 percent of their one rep maximum yeah, yeah. was discriminating factor same with their bench press throw so bench press throw was 25 percent higher on the winners and and the 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 ballistic jump squat was 12 percent higher and this is on karate athletes karate athletes wow that's yeah. interesting for so sure. it was it was it was um completely 
uh, the defining factor between winners and losers. This was for their national selection. So they basically had their top two athletes fight, fight it out. Okay. And they did all this, the testing before, then they did the results and then they just correlated the results sure, to the, sure. the scores. It's so, interesting that they found that the uh, vertical jump was not a discriminating factor, but the squat jump was where it's m- mostly the same movement. You're using the same muscles. They're both measuring power. Um, that's interesting for sure. So there must be something about that external load uh, that, you know, affects that somehow. Um, so that's, that's super interesting for sure. Now I know the physical fitness testing that we've done now, like you said, we're not putting in those cut scores. We're not saying, okay, you have to get this point, but right now in all of the combat sports really, and a lot of the sports really out there, there's not a lot of research that has all the physiological profiles, especially in an individual sport like karate, like judo, like any of the other combat sports. So right now I think it's, you know, our job researchers job to get as much data as we can to try Mm -hmm. and see where we can kind of put those cut scores where is that threshold where do you have to be in order to at least have a shot or or what it looks like a shot to get into that world level would you agree with that yeah absolutely yeah. absolutely and more importantly i think for, from my end because it's 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 nice to have the goal on the on the performance or the outcome yeah. but more importantly i think are the 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 process objectives or the process mm, goals. So if, sure, if, course, if yeah. the organization starts to say, this is the threshold and then next year it's up just a little bit. Now, now it's a little bit more Then it provides motivation and, and goal setting for the athletes. For sure. And they start to see, um, yeah, I need to be at X level in whatever exercise in order for me to perform. And if not just to, if, if not to get on the podium, at least it puts me on a level playing field with all the other elites in the world. And now I can work my, this technique or that tactic. For sure. And I think another thing that will go with that too is also some form of technical assessments or, or, or I mean, tactical assessment, I think is different, but technical assessments, especially to making sure that, you know, you have the technical uh, discriminating factors that will, that will relate to scoring or not scoring scoring or being successful or unsuccessful yeah and the, and the technique is a little bit like the psychological it's it's it can be very refined mm, yeah. um, in certain areas but ultimately it's up it's up to sub, uh, subjective of evaluation course. yeah um, but there's ways we get around um, the, the the inherent weaknesses in that so we can have uh, uh, d- uh, inter-rater reliability. Of so course. we say take Toughest four, part. <laughs> yeah, four, four raters and they just, um, they rate the athlete based on say slow motion video for sure. just the element. Um, there is the challenge again in, in my particular environment is the scoring criteria as, as the WKF uh, writes it actually has two elements that are, even though it's, it's technique, it's tactic. So mm. distance and timing. So to, to put something in the right distance in the right time is a tactical element. That's very true. So, so there, measures of technique um so so it becomes challenging to to tease apart technique and tactic inside of that comp- that element of of uh, of a punch or a kick sure sure but it is it is possible you know you just do it on a static surface it's self-selected distance and self-selected timing for the athlete and they just perform the technique onto us on a bag or a, a, an opponent sure rather okay. than having moving opponents for yeah no, that makes sense so that's something that they're doing on some of their tests i think already and that uh we looked at some of those aerobic tests where they're doing something similar yeah, to exactly that. Yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. so there it is uh, anything else that you have on your your notes there that you want to add to that well just we just on? a little bit on the last one or the this the fifth element there would be the the, the high performance lifestyle mm. so and this is uh, again even harder to measure in many ways than the the um the psychological um so elements such as nutritional practices yes, recovery strategies because they don't really fit that that bit is super important and it doesn't fit into any of the other elements so for us right now in our system we're looking at having a fifth element i know in uh, wheelchair rugby they've just released their third version of their um gmp and they've actually i think got eight elements now okay because they have other factors you know they've got the the um the the medical condition of the athletes sure. they all have special special requirements and to be an athlete when you have um some sort of medical condition uh pr- you know paralysis something like that performance is linked on the ability to still manage that that issue sure but still perform on the of court course. so they, yeah, they've yeah. got their own factors yeah. for sure yeah and even for an elite athletes there's going to be some form of of you know type of living like that with some kind of nutritional profile that's going to be conducive to winning of course that's that's a little bit different of a, of a topic for sure but i mean you have to look at it if you want to know what makes a gold medal athlete so absolutely yeah. yeah and then and in the canadian reality a lot of our athletes aren't um they're funded but mm-hmm. they have to still manage either studies for or sure. a job or something like that so 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 as simple as it seems time management 
you know, excellent time management skills is, is very likely part of a gold medal profile of an elite athlete. Yes. You yeah. Know, but, and how do you measure that? Exactly. That's what I was just about to say. How do you yeah. measure, how do you measure your time management skills besides yeah. looking at it? So, um, no, that's all really great stuff. And, and, and I mean, it's awesome what you've already done, what you're doing for the gold medal profile. I know you said you're doing your, uh, masters at U, UBC right now. You're, you're kind of wrapping that up over the next few months. So you've done that work already. What's next? What's kind of the next step in this kind of project or, or moving forward? Where do you want to see it go? Oh, well, well really for the next thing with Karate Canada is to, to, um, is to create the, the model sure. and uh, put it out there for review. Um, it, it's a lot going to be a lot of work, um, and we have, I would say, at least a year worth of work at, at Cry Canada level. Uh, for me individually, within this this next submission for my project work, um, I will complete it to probably 40% uh, and then move on as and part continue. of the requirements for the course. Yes, yeah, because I have program. a deadline, so yeah, I have yeah. to get it of in. Of course, I get um, that. But it really is, a. it's going to be a living document. It's going to be a work in progress. And as more research comes out, we will refine it and tweak it. Um, knowing what I know from the other Canadian sports that are five to six years into this, their models appear to be very robust. Mm. However, they're refining them all the time. Of course. So it, it has to work that way. Yeah, and it makes sense. As things move on, you gotta you gotta change and adapt to see what the new standards are, right? So yep. it makes sense. 100%. All right, well, that's great stuff, uh, Craig. Um, everything in there is really good. I think it's applicable to not only combat sport athletes, but really all sports. They have some form of this. It's just sometimes the combat sports are lagging behind in some of this stuff, but mm. uh, they're catching up now and, and going forward. So again, can't thank you enough for coming in and giving your expertise on this kind of stuff. It's great to talk to somebody who's, you know, not only only in the field as a, as a coach, but also in somebody who's researching it, studying it, looking at it, and trying to apply all that stuff to their coaching practice and really trying to make that, that gold medal athlete because at the end of the day, that's what it matters in elite sports, right? It's, mm. it's, you know, it's, it's cruel almost, but you know, you want those gold medal athletes, especially if you're talking elite sports. So mm. this is a way to do it and, and putting this system in and putting it forward is, is just all the right steps. So again, thanks for sharing all this information and thanks for joining us. Okay. My pleasure. Yeah. And You're hopefully welcome. we'll get you back on soon and got lots of other stuff to talk about. I know this is just uh, hot in your world right now. So yes. I wanted to get you in. So thanks again. So this is Craig Devlin that we're speaking to. Uh, Craig, hopefully we'll see you soon. I'm Kaylin Angloss. Thanks guys for tuning into the K-Fit show and we will talk to you guys next week. Thanks.